Wow, a tile! Hello and welcome to the Infinite Escape Room, the puzzling podcast where a bunch of geographically diverse chums come together, have a drink, and work together to solve a homemade escape room. I'm Ben Levy Griffiths, and tonight I am drinking a uh, Thomas Watkins Kuru Hav, uh, which is a, a very nice beer. Kuru Hav? What? What is it? Is it like a uh, lagery beer or a? It's a it's a, it's a beer beer. It's a, mm. it's a. Oh yeah, of course, some of it. Uh, it's a taste of the Welsh summer captured in a bottle. And join me this week. We have. I'm Laura, and I'm drinking a punk alcohol free because it's been a boozy weekend thus far. I'm trying to behave. Uh, I'm Alid, and I'm I'm drinking a cup of tea. Because, yeah, it's been a boozy weekend. <laughs> and I'm Mike, and it's been a boozy weekend and continues to be a boozy weekend because I am drinking a Brewdog Juice Shack. It's a tropical milkshake IPA. And I know I've said about some beers before that they're a bit like Umbongo but alcoholic, but this one really is a lot like it. <laughs> it's really kind of, it's got that kind of um, oat, uh, oat cream kind of uh, yummy creaminess to it. Uh, it's very fruity. It's absolutely delicious. Laura hates it. Uh, so this is a real win because this is not only a beer that I really like, but it's also a beer that Laura won't steal. <laughs> I even actually bought it for you. So. <laughs> he did go right for me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, darling. Can I have more? <laughs> and I, I guess we should probably say that we did try doing this. So we, we're currently recording on Sunday the 4th and of, of April. And we did try this on the 1st of April. Yes, 1st of April. And uh, it did not go well. My my internet completely decided that we shouldn't be recording on the 1st. So, so we're here again, and and on the, on the first, we were all drinking. I think a bit more booziness. There was prosecco, even. Oh yeah, we were on the prosecco, weren't we, Law? Yep, it didn't last long. We had a lovely chat. Uh, while Ben was disconnected for, for the best part of an hour, we just had a lovely chat. It's mm. got <laughs> polished off our drinks, and then we're like, "Oh wait, where's Ben?" <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully. This evening will be a little more successful. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our Patreons for their continued support. And I'd like to give a special shout out to two of our supporters, Ryan Sparrow and Maggie. Thank you very much to the both of you for helping keep the show on the metaphoric road. Cheers, guys. Just what is the Infinite Escape Room? Well, it's like any other escape room you may be familiar with. But this one stretches across all known themes, retail parks and dimensions. And because it's infinite, there is no end. Every room in the infinite escape room links into the next. In one big never ending. <laughs> Every Sorry, room friend. in the infinite escape room. It's just like, good news, everyone. <laughs> with the exact same intonation last time as well. I was like, I oh, mustn't put him off his stride. But then I did. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. <laughs> um, good news. <laughs> in your own time, Ben. <laughs> Every room in the Infinite Escape Room links into the next in one big never-ending escape experience adventure. Each week, one of us presents part of the Infinite Escape Room while the others try and solve it. If we don't escape within 30 minutes, then terrible things shall befall us and, if we break anything, we will lose our deposit, of which you all know what it is because I already revealed it to you on Friday, um, so I'm expecting a somewhat flattened response. Uh, this week, our deposit is the world's ability to produce flour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah there's that flat there. response you wanted, Ben. I forgot all about the deposit. I'm going to be honest with you. We mm. were smashed that evening. We got absolutely <laughs> leathered. We polished off the Prosecco. Then I think we moved to the gin. The only thing I really recall uh, while I was still able to actually hear the, the responses was that Alid thought we should use uh, Salmonella instead. Um, and then <laughs> Mike corrected him to say uh, it, maybe Semolina would be. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yes. And we kind of, we, we worked out like, would chickpeas be included? But it's like, it's the, be the means to produce flour and not flour producing things because that felt very important because gram did. flour makes onion barges and they're, I can't imagine a world without onion barges. So please do not break anything. Are we ready? Yeah. Yes. Then let's enter the Infinite Escape Room. Last time on the Infinite Escape Room, the gang found themselves escaping the changing rooms at a drag race. Upon leaving the changing room, they had to fight for their life in a lip sync battle. After being told to sashay away, the team found themselves, still in sequin dresses with feather boas and high heels, outside, where an army of 60 foot drag queens were charging the town. Starting to run down the street, you begin to realise that heels really aren't the kind of thing to run in. But you can't go barefooted. There's glass all over the street. Over the other side of the road, you notice a costume shop. Surely they'll have something more sensible to change into. You're in luck as the lights are on and the door is open. Ducking in before the giant drag queens see you, you notice an almost empty room. Aside from three costume stands, with costumes on, there's only a door to the changing room and nothing else. Walking into the middle of the shop, you look for someone to help you, 
As if by magic, the shopkeeper appears. Ladies, you don't seem to be dressed for the right occasion. I'm very sorry, but it seems we've had a bit of a run of things recently. Covid restrictions coming to an end, and everyone wants fancy dress. I've only got these three left. The man points to three costumes. A cowboy, a sailor, and a Native American. I think you might be in luck, says the man. Looks like one of them should fit each of you. Please, one of you choose one costume and go and try it on in changing room A. Take the other two with you. They can choose afterwards. You look at the costumes and then back again to find the shopkeeper nowhere to be found. Your time starts now. What would you like to do? Pick a costume so, and go try it on. <laughs> I think so. You said one of us needs to pick a costume, doesn't it? And the other two would take the other ones with us. So who wants to wear a costume? I think the thing was the... Go in, try it on. One will fit each one of us. So go in, take all with you, try it on. And then whichever one fits you, you leave the other two in the change room. Ah, okay. He said, please, one of you choose one costume and go and try it on in change room eight. Take the other two, as in other two participants with you. Oh. Uh, they can choose afterwards. Okay. Okay, well, Allard, do you want to go first, Uh Yeah, I'll take the, the cowboy outfit. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, so you take the cowboy outfit and all three of you, rather peculiarly, uh, Trot over to changing room A. Cover my eyes, Alad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, inside changing room A, you uh, you close the door behind you. It's a relatively small room, but enough for all three of you to turn your backs and uh, and for Alad to, to change into his cowboy costume. You notice that there is a second door opposite the one you came in. Alad, when you are ready, what would you like to do? Uh, I, to the door in the changing room... Not the door that I came in through. Yes, correct. Cool. Can I try that door, please? Uh, I have you changed yet? I have changed. Mike, you can cover and cover your eyes. Ah, the, uh, the the door opposite the one you came in is is open. You can open it. Can I go through it? Uh, you can do. Uh, I'm going to say that all three of you go through it, if that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Wonderful. Sure. All three of you go through it, and you find yourself in a saloon. Okay. Above ah, because you were wearing the cowboy alad. Mm. The cowboy alad. Fit. Outfit. Above the bar, it says the Wild West Saloon. There is a bar, obviously. It's a, it's a saloon. Uh, you can see a, a piano. There are a couple of tables with stools around them. There is a poster on one of the walls. And behind the bar, you can see many bottles of whiskey. What would you like to do? Can we take a look at the whiskey? Because is, is it good whiskey? Well, you uh, you have a little look at the whiskey. By rough guess, there are about 26 bottles of whiskey. Can I try some? Uh, you, you can do, yeah. Uh, they, they appear to be in alphabetical order. They have uh, right. alphabetical names. Uh, what, what would you like to try? Would you like to try the one beginning with A? Yeah. Ar- oh, it's uh, Ardmore. That's one of my favourite whiskies. Uh, no, it's um, Adled Ardvark. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Uh, you, you try some and it's a, it's a little weak for your liking. It's um, so it's quite watery. Ben, mm. is, is B Befuddled Beaver? Uh, it's uh, Befuddled Badger, actually. Oh! Uh, I'm trying to think what C would be. Clumsy cow? Uh, uh, C is clean camel. Of course. <laughs> Why didn't we guess that? Okay, so I'm guessing we don't need to go through an entire alphabet of whiskies. Oh, I kind of want feel to, like though, because sort of I want to see how yeah, many names he's got. Because I'm guessing I want D to be dumbfounded deer. Uh, it's it's drowsy deer. Oh, oh my God, how am I so close? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's a status and an animal, essentially, is the uh, the naming scheme for these whiskies. Ebriated eel? Uh, uh, eccentric elk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My inebriated would be I. That could be uh, I inebriated said e- iguana. I said ebriated. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's not inebriated, he's just ebriated. <laughs> um, can we take a look at this poster, Ben? Uh, you can do, yes. The poster seems to be of some horses for sale, and I am going to drop it into the chat for you now. Uh, it'll be uh, in the show notes. Okay, so we've got a, um, a poster in oldie timey western font uh, with horses for sale. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 horses. Uh, prices ranging from uh, $89 to a single dollar. Uh, one of the horses, Mustang, has been reported as stolen. His uh, name's got stolen written in red pen next to him. Interesting. Hmm. Thoughts, people? Uh, should we have a look at the other things that are there in the room? Just to see if there's anything else? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we had a bar, table, chairs and piano, didn't we? Correct, yes. Should we have a look at the piano, please? Uh, the piano is uh, an old-timey honky-tonk piano. Uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't. It's not playing because there's no one playing it. Uh, but otherwise, it's unremarkable. How many keys are on the piano? The standard amount. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice answer. <laughs> um... 
And I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna take a stab and say that if Laura and I put the costumes on and we go back oh well, we go back out to the changing room and if Laura and I put the costume the other two costumes on and each of us walk back through the door, we'll be taken to somewhere thematically appropriate for that costume. I wonder if that might tie together with our um whiskies and our um our horses or whether or it, or whether it's self contained. Curiously, the door that you came in is no longer there. Oh. Wow. Oh, it's self-contained. Oh, heck. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, in which case, can we take a look at the bar, please? Yes, it is a, it is a long bar stretching almost the length of the, uh, of the saloon. Uh, there is a note on the bar. Uh, there is also a single bar stool at the bar, which you may like to look at as well. Uh, let's read the note. Uh, the note says, Mad Bill Hickey is on his way into town. Make sure you have his favourite whiskey ready, as it'll be the only thing to stop him shooting up the place. Remember, it's got a kick like his horse. Can we have a look at M? Can we have a look at um, the whiskey with M? The M is a musty Mustang. I say the Mustang's been stolen, and we have a Mustang on the horses for sale. I'm going to say that might be, that might be his favourite whiskey. Because it's got a kick like his favourite horse. That would be my stab a dab. So can we grab the bottle of Mustang? Uh, you can do indeed. Yes, uh, it's got a very ornate label on it. The uh, the M is sort of 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 Mustang is very sort of ornate and stands out. Can we have a look at the stool as well, Ben? The uh, the stool the the lone stool is at the very far end of the bar from the note and, and for where you let, set the whiskey down as well. And it has uh, it has Bill written on the seat of the stool. Presumably this is his stool. Okay. Ooh, are we going to get to push the whiskey down the bar, like in all the Western films? Slide it down the bar towards him. Do it. Well, he's not there, so... Well, if he sits on it, he's going to have a horrible surprise. <laughs> <laughs> or a pleasant surprise. You don't know what he likes. What are you going to do? Can we put the whiskey in front of his stool? We'll, we'll slide it down the bar to him. Because that feels appropriate, I, I guess. So you slide the whiskey down the bar. The first one falls off the end, and thankfully, they're plastic glasses, so it doesn't break. So you slide another down, and it lands just in front of his seat. As if by magic, the shopkeeper appears. And says, it looks like you three have had enough for one day. Come on. And you're back in the shop. Uh, There are now uh, two costumes left. There is the sailor and the Native American. I will be the sailor. And the three of you head back into costume room A. So back in costume room A, there is the door that you've just come in. The ability to get changed. And there is the door, once again, that is opposite the door you came in. So I'll get changed into the sailor outfit and um, we can pass the door. Wonderful. Stepping outside, you find the floor beneath you is rocking this way and that. A salty sea air fills your nose. A panicked-looking man runs up to you and, seeing your confusion, grabs you by the shoulders and says, You're in the Navy now, man. We've been hit. We'll sink if you don't get to the control room and press two buttons, one to lock off the lower decks and the second to start the pumping of water already in them. Before you can ask any more questions, the man jumps overboard. Behind where he was standing, there is the door to the control room. Can we try the door? You can try the door. It is open and you walk through into the control room. The uh, the room is sort of rocking around because you've been hit and you're in the sea. What you can see in the room directly opposite you is a radio. To the right of you, you can see a, a grid of buttons like a control panel. And to the left of exactly where you're standing... There is a cupboard with a seven letter combination lock. Above the seven letters, there are two eyeballs. Can we try A, 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 A? That doesn't work. What about a, eyeball? A, 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 B. Uh, that does not work either. We could be here a while if you keep doing that. A, 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 C. <laughs> I'm afraid not. Z, 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 Z. <laughs> We'll start from the bottom. Oh. <laughs> if it's any consolation, starting at A would be slightly quicker. Eyeballs above it. How many letters is eyeballs? Eight. Oh. Oh, yeah. Eyeball is seven. Eyeball is seven, though. Should we try that? Yeah, should we try? Let's try. Uh, yeah, try eyeball. Uh, wheeling eyeball in doesn't do anything. Damn. Um. Okay, so uh, that absolute jerk left us. To, I like the fact that he was like, oh, you guys lock off the decks and pump some water and then jumped overboard. Like, that's a real, <laughs> real dick move. Uh, two yeah. eyes. Should we have a look at the other stuff in the room first and then come back to this? Yeah. Can we have a look at the radio? The uh, the radio has uh, a single button on it, uh, which it's, is like labelled on slash off. Should we try turning it on? Trying to turn it on, uh, you hear this. Morse code. Yeah. Can we have it again, please? Did anybody manage to note that down? <laughs> No, No, I don't know Morse code. Can I have it again, please, Ben? Uh, 
Uh, I have also placed it into the Discord chat if you would like to play it back to yourself multiple times. Might need to. <laughs> right, so hold on. <laughs> we need to find something in this room then that gives us the key for what that clue means. So there needs to be like a conversion for Morse code or something. Written somewhere? Hmm. I think Mike's listening to that again. Yeah. <laughs> um, should we have a look at the buttons? Well, Having a look at the buttons, there is a, a, a grid of about 10 by 10 buttons. However, all the labels have been wiped off. All you can see along the top is uh, is the letters A to J, and along the uh, side is the numbers 1 to 10. Okay, I think I've got it. I think I've got it. It's because it's so fast. It's like, it's really fast. Okay, so, sorry. Just quickly, um, for the Morse code message, I think is dash dot dash dot 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 dash 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 dot dot dot. I think that's the message. So I can tell you that you are very almost there. Your your second one is is slightly wrong. Piss! Well, it doesn't matter if the second one's slightly wrong. You've got oh, a 50-50 chance, one, two, three, four, five. It? It's a four dots and a dash. Okay, so it's dash dot dash dot space dot 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 dash space dot dash 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 space dash dash dot dot dot. That's the uh, that's that's the message that came through incredibly quickly off some <laughs> bloody tele man's finger things <laughs> okay sorry I, I told you I, there was a whole bit of the room done while i was trying to work that out what's what's going on <laughs> Where are we? we're just looking at the grid yes there's a um, there's a good but te- numbers one to ten and the letters a to j a, a grid of buttons is there anything else in the room uh no it is just that um a to j yes it's a to j across the top and one to ten down the side of the grid of buttons unfortunately all the other buttons have had their um all the buttons have had their individual labels scrubbed off by some um overzealous cleaner do we need to know morse code i feel like we do as I in as in uh, oh sorry sorry Alan. i feel like there's probably a key or a conversion thing somewhere in this room we haven't found but where if we've already looked at everything in the room maybe it's outside the room or maybe it's under... Can we look underneath the radio? Uh, the radio is very, very heavy and sitting on the floor, so okay. I'm afraid you cannot. Uh, I, I would uh, bring your, your focus back to the cupboard that is uh, locked with a uh, I-I and then a seven-letter word. I-I, Captain. I-I, of Captain. Course. It's seven letters, it's Captain. Piss. Piss and shit. <laughs> Bloody Ben. <laughs> and that's seven I, letters, I, yeah. Oh, Ben, you, need, you had to give us that one. You had to literally drive round to my house us. with a little spoon. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> straight into our mouth. <laughs> so, uh, wheeling Captain into the, into the padlock, you, uh, you open the cupboard. Inside, there is a single sheet of paper. Uh, at the top of it, it says... Thank you. Uh, Morse code key. <laughs> and I've dropped it into the chat, and it'll also be in the show notes. Okay, so the first word, dash, dot, dash, dot, or the first letter, sorry. C. Dash, dot, dash, dot, C. And then it's uh, four dots and a dash. Four dots and a dash is V. No, sorry, it's not. It's the number four. C4, okay. And then it's uh, dot, dash, dash, dash. Is... Uh, J. Yes. C4, J. And then dash, dash, dot, dot, dot. Seven. Yeah. Okay, can we go to the uh, the matrix of buttons, please? And hit the C button. Oh, wait, no. C hit button at coordinates, C4. Um, and the button at coordinates J7. Uh, pressing C4 and J7, they light up and you hear a a, a grinding and a, and a pumping sound way, way, way below you. As if by magic, the shopkeeper appears. Whoa there, I'm not sure you're qualified to be messing around with that. Let's get you out of trouble. And you find yourself back in the shop. Can we get a time check, Ben? Uh, you have got just over, just under 12 minutes left. Okay. Uh, so I guess it's up to me to put the Native American, very politically sensitive uh, mm-hmm. costume on. Excellent. And uh, you're all going to go into the uh, changing room, presumably get changed and through the door opposite the one you came in. Yes. And in fact, I'm just mulling for a second that America was going to build a wall to keep immigrants out, whereas, you know, like, how would that have worked? They would have had to, I mean, it keeps them out of Mexico. Because they're all immigrants. It's crazy. Uh, they got some, some crazy notions going on, them crazy cats. They need a good good sea around them is what they need. They need to be a good good island. Where were we? Oh, let's go through the door. Yeah. Wonderful. Trundling through the door, you find yourself in a teepee. In the middle of the teepee 
there is a raging fire. Uh, but not overly raging. I mean, you're not in any danger. The, the fire is perfectly safe. Opposite the door to the teepee, on the other side, at 12 o'clock, if you will, you can see a table with a little box on it. And behind the table, you can see a, a gold pole uh, with the number zero engraved on it. You also notice four other gold poles around the uh, around the room. I love the idea of a TP with a door. They have an entrance. Yeah, I just I just like the idea of like a you know door with a letterbox and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this sort of like feeling that you're actually quite secure, but you can actually just sort of crawl under the edge of the. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. um, this concept where you have like random doors in the desert and you you actually put a TP around it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. Started with the door. <laughs> <laughs> Can we found a wild door? <laughs> found, found, oh goodness! Can we have a look at the golden pole? Uh, the, the 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 one at uh, twelve o'clock. Yes. Or the other ones. The one. At, all of them. The one at twelve first. Okay, the one at twelve o'clock simply has a zero etched into it. Okay, and if the I word or the number. At the number zero. If I look at the one to the right of that... Okay, so the one to the right of that is at approximately two o'clock. You notice that this one is at hip height. It has a single cut mark on it, um, and it also has a uh, an arrow, as, as in a bow and arrow, affixed to it, pointing right. And if I follow that trajectory down to the next one? Down you have, uh, the next one is at about four o'clock. That is at about head height. It has two notches taken out of it and it has an arrow fixed to it pointing left. Oh, okay. Mm. And the final one? Uh, oh. no, the next one is at approximately eight o'clock. Uh, that's at shoulder height. It has five notches in it and it has an arrow pointing right. And there's one more. And the final one? Uh, the final one uh, is at knee height. It has three notches on it, and it has an arrow pointing down. Whereabouts was that um, positioned? Oh, sorry, that was at approximately 10 o'clock. Three notches and an arrow facing down. down. Could we have a look at the table with the box on it? Uh, you can do. Uh, the table is an ordinary table. The box? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, uh, so the, the, uh, that's what we really wanted you know, to know then was what's the lacquer on this table <laughs> um non-existent <laughs> the uh, the box has a uh, yakima written in gold on the top of it and the it has a little rotary combination lock affixing it the numbers are zero to ten okay so i get the feeling that these poles are giving us movements on the rotary lock and that the arrows are giving us left right instructions so, mm -hmm. um, you, Ben, you mentioned some heights of them. So the pole at two o'clock was at hip height, um, and that was a single notch and right. Uh, the, how tall, the golden pole was zero, wasn't it? How tall is that? That goes to the ceiling. Okay. You get the feeling that is only important to kind of show you this is where you start. Okay, and let's see. We had um, the pole at four o'clock was how tall again? Head height. Okay. Uh, we had shoulder height for the pole at 8 o'clock, and the pole at 10 o'clock was... Knee. Okay, so it would if we went in, in, in height order, it would be something along the lines of turn the dial to 3, push the dial in, and then right 1, left 2, and then right... No, sorry... Right one, left two. <laughs> no, if, 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 if we start uh, right no. three, four, sorry. If we're starting at zero, with the biggest pole, yeah, we work from the largest one down. You've also got oh oh of course yes I'm an idiot yeah you've also got yeah. head shoulders knees and toes but almost haven't you head shoulders knees and toes and hip. I think if we start with the other <laughs> one because then three down would be like three to end it wouldn't it? Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. So in that case, it would be starting at zero, two to the left. Five to the right, one to the right, and then can you go down oh, to three? Oh, three, and you press. You can push down, can't you? Push in. Mm. Excellent, wonderful. You uh, you wheel all that into the wheel in perfect order, and you push down to unlock the lock. Hey, well done. Whee. Presumably, you'd like to open the box. 
Yes. Inside the box, you find a green glittery powder, almost like a, like a sand. And on the inside lid of the box, you find a picture of a fire. Oh, OK. Can we um, throw the powder into the fire in the middle of the room? You can do, yes. As if by magic, the shopkeeper appears. I think I can hear the chief coming to see what all this smoke is about. Let's head back to the shop. You find yourselves not in the shop, but in the changing room. It's almost exactly as you remember it, except the shop side of the door is on the inside of the changing room. You see the words changing room A on it, but the A is hanging off and you notice for the first time that it is an ornate tile like your other ones. I've meant to have given you tiles along the way by the other... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> a tile. <laughs> cool. Um, but you notice, got, sort, sort of <laughs> ad-libbing this bit now, uh, you find on the floor or amongst yourselves um, uh, three three tiles. Um, you, uh, what tiles did you get? Oh, haven't I written this down? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Ben's got tiles again. <laughs> they're, they're very ornate looking tiles. I've just I've just frozen your time, by the way, because I've... Um, uh, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. That was it, yes. I um, So just on Thursday, when we were rec- before we recorded, I was very hard-pressed and I had a... Um, a whole lot of notes written on paper. And over the last couple of days, because I had more time, I've transferred uh, not quite 100% of those notes <laughs> <laughs> onto the computer. And I've missed missed the uh, the crucial the crucial bit. So, Alid. Yes. You have got uh, a tile with a very ornate M from the Mustang whiskey bottle. Laura, you have got a tile with a very ornate C uh, because... You're a sailor. <laughs> um, For the control room, maybe? Uh, 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 riffing on, on C as yeah. as um, as the C. And Mike, you have got a very ornate Y because it, you were in a Yakama teepee. Ah, I was just like, why oh, am I in this teepee? I get it. MCY. The door that you would normally go through for adventure is locked, but there are four holders on the door upon which you could place a tile. And we need to place... Y M C A in that order. Oh, of We're course. a sailor, a Native American. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and a cowboy. Successfully opening the door, a blast of music and screaming hits you. <laughs> As you walk through, you find yourself on stage with several other people dressed up. It looks like you are the village people. And the Hooray! crowd is expecting you to know all of the hits from the 1970s and 80s. I Congratulations, do. you have solved my puzzle. Oh, well done. <laughs> well done, Ben. Do you know, what, I, I, was, I was convinced that... Um, do you remember Mr. Ben? Well, Ben was being Mr. Ben, I imagine. Yes, yeah, but, I like, remember it's Mr. Exactly Ben. modelled off of that. I see, I thought this was that, and I was like, I didn't see it as being... Because he, he was a, a little bit gay, but YMCA is really gay. <laughs> I didn't realise that it was... Um, oh, man. That was awesome. I love YMCA. That was yeah. a lovely surprise. Nice job. I, I thought village people were you mentioned the outfits to begin with <laughs> and then i thought no this is mr ben but it's both i um so coming out of bailey's puzzle with uh, alid having to perform macho man <laughs> uh, which was also <laughs> done by the village people uh, which I, for some reason i didn't know i didn't connect the two uh, no yes in in editing i then got the idea for something where you'd get where you dress up as the village people and then who does dress up but Mr. Ben, the uh, the sort of 1980s, yeah, it is a cartoon. Cartoon. Oh, um, it was barely a cartoon as well. It was. But we, I, so me and Faye, have watched, and I've got to say, actually, thank you very much to Faye because she helped with bits of this puzzle. Actually, quite a lot of it. Quite quite a lot of the concepts uh, <laughs> she, she actually thought up. We watched quite a lot of Mr. Ben and it is, there is almost no moving in it. There's like, occasionally you might get a character moving like behind a hedge. You can just see the top half of them. Or they might like wobble from side to side. But that is kind of it. Glorious. It's from that wonderful age of um, British animation where it was like, yeah, we've got an animation department. Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> his, name's, his name's Gavin. You're like, oh, God. It was just some poor guy who just sit there, just do like a beautiful hand drawing, like a watercolor or something. Like, I've all the engine. I've all the engine is just gorgeous. And that's not animated at all. It's just bits of paper moving around. Congratulations. You solved that with two minutes and 38 seconds remaining. Well, hey. So plenty of time. Thanks very much for listening. You can subscribe to us on all your favourite apps, feeds, iTunes, and at our website, www.theinfiniteescaperoom.com. You can follow us and get in touch via Facebook and Twitter at tier underscore podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, and we hope you did, we'd be much obliged if you could leave us a review on iTunes or Facebook, as is a massive help in reaching new audiences. 
And as we mentioned at the start, we're also on Patreon. If you'd like to support the show, head over to patreon.com forward slash the infinite escape room where you can listen to episodes a week early have your name mentioned on the show get unedited episodes and more we love you lots and we hope to see you next time in another infinite escape room goodbye bye bye bye